Hey now, hey, it's Mr. Gonzalez here. We're gonna do an organic molecule test review. We're gonna go pretty fast. So if you need to uh, pause, definitely have your notes out so you can follow along, um, but let's go. All right, we started talking about the building blocks of life and the building blocks of life we said, as always, are the elements. And we started talking about the specific elements that are found in organic matter. So they were carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Those are the most common elements found in organic matter. matter. We then said they sort of combine and form and bond uh, to sort of make things in your body. Any reaction that occurs in a living thing is under the category of metabolism. Now metabolism we usually talk about like you know burning food and exercise but metabolism is a chem word and it just means every reaction that occurs in the body. Now, carbon, we said, was awesome. And we said, why? Why is it so good? And why is it the backbone of all orga organic model, of all organic matter? And we said it was because of its valence electrons. It can, it can share in all four directions, which makes it a perfect backbone for these long chains of organic matter. Now, we also said that if you change letters around and if you change bonds around, you'll change the chemical properties. An example we had was on the left, we have estrogen and testosterone. Very similar organic molecules, but you just change a few things around and you make an entirely different hormone. The same with glucose and fructose. They actually have the same number of letters. You just change the arrangement of them and you get a brand new sugar. Organic. We talked about what the word meant. Organic in the supermarket means you know, food that has no pesticides, is grown naturally, has no chemicals. And organic in science is, has carbon uh, or anything that comes from a living thing, sort of like feathers are organic, wood, stuff like that. Now there's four types of organic matter. Carbs, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. We started with carbs. We talked about what foods are carbs, and the main things are sugars and starches. Fruit, for example, is a sugar, um, blah, blah, blah. So here we go. Carbs' main uh, purpose is to provide cells with the energy needed for cellular respiration. Glucose is the main sugar that's burned in cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is the process in which cells use glucose. Um, they, they sort of make energy from glucose, okay? Sugars and starches, like I said, are the two. We talked about simple carbs and complex carbs. Sugars are simple carbs and starches are complex carbs. The simplest carb you can have, the simplest sugar, is monosaccharides, one sugar. That picture shows one sugar. Glucose and fructose were our examples. Disaccharides have two sugars combined, and we have sucrose and lactose as our disaccharides. Amylose or starch by its common name, is our polysaccharide, which is super much longer than this. Long hundreds of thousands of long chains. Starch is a polymer of glucose, and we said a polymer is a long chain of molecules. Okay, other polysaccharides. We said the most common, most common polysaccharide in the world is cellulose, which is found in the cell wall of plants. You can find it in wood and paper and chitin, which makes up the shell of crabs and roaches and bugs. Here is cellulose, cell wall. We showed a picture of what it would look like if you zoomed in and zoomed in and zoomed in into one fiber. You would finally see the molecule. And if you notice, each one is like a little glucose. How glucose is stored? Okay, it depends if you're a plant or an animal. If you're a plant, you take excess glucose, which you make with the sun, and you put it as starch. That means you store it as starch, like a potato. But us, or dude that plays soccer, we take um, glucose, or anything that uh, comes, that gives us glucose. Ah, like if you have a potato and you break it up, which is starch, um, you store excess glucose as glycogen, which hangs out in our liver. Now... Starch is too big to enter our cells, so it has to be digested. Now, this glucose enters your cells and is totally used for cellular respiration. Again, energy making. Now, anything extra goes where? That's right, the liver. 
And so anything extra is stored as glycogen in the liver. Now we have this whole flow chart which you did in class. I won't go through this here. I'll put this picture up on our website so you can sort of stare at it and look at it. But it basically says that there's two hormones that control blood sugar. Insulin will lower your blood sugar because it makes it go into the cells or it makes it be stored in the liver as glycogen. Glucagon is another hormone. If you have low blood sugar, the pancreas makes glucagon, which makes glycogen, stored glucose in your liver, become glucose again. And that raises your blood sugar. I would rewind that if you are having problems understanding that. We talked about diabetes and we basically says it's the disease where either you don't make enough insulin or your cells don't recognize insulin or don't respond to it normally. We said you can sort of test yourself, test your blood. If you have diabetes, you test yourself every day and you either take insulin shots or insulin pills or you can control your diet. Lipids are fats, waxes, oils. Um, and uh, yeah, we said why lipids are awesome or pH fat. We said that cell membrane, uh, the cell membrane is made up of lipids. We use lipids for long-term energy storage, um, blubber, myelin sheath, a neuron has um, fat around it to help with uh, signal, and hydrophobic, that means lipids repel water. To recognize a fat molecule, you need to see something called a carboxyl group at the end of a long chain of hydrocarbons. What I mean by that is, check these guys out. These are two lipids, two fats. The red right there is your carboxyl group. As soon as you see a long chain of C's with H's, that's called a hydrocarbon. At the end, if you see this uh, carboxyl group, the thing in red, you know you have a lipid. Now be careful because this carboxyl group shows up in another protein. Um, but if it's got a long chain of hydrocarbons and one carboxyl group, you got yourself a lipid. Now we also talked about the shape of the molecule changes its uh, physical properties. So we said, hey, which one is healthier? Well, it turns out if it's bent, it's actually healthier. Trans fat. <clears throat> we talked about trans fat and how trans fat is a man-made fat uh, where unsaturated fat, the healthy one, is actually converted into a solid because um, saturated fats are solid in room temperature and unsaturated fats, the healthy one, are liquid, like vegetable oil and stuff. The bad thing about trans fats, we said they're pretty unhealthy. They give you high cholesterol, can clog your arteries, and give you a heart attack. Phospholipid is sort of a long lipid with a phosphorus at the top, and that one makes up our cell membrane. We talked about how the little balls where the phosphorus are like water, so they stay um, on the outside or inside of a cell, and the lipid tails stay within the layer. Proteins, number three. Proteins have these awesome shapes, like very ribbon-like, and proteins are polymers of amino acids. That means they're made up of amino acids. What's cool is there's only 20 amino acids, and that makes up every living thing's proteins. Only those 20 amino acids. We showed you pictures of amino acids, and we said, hey, what do they all seem to have in common? And it's the letter N. They all have nitrogen. And so this is the basic structure of amino, amino acid. They have what's called an amino group, which has a nitrogen, and there's that carboxyl group again. So if you're trying to pick between a lipid and an amino acid, you just look for that nitrogen and you know you have a protein or amino acid. Now we talked about how they bond together because an amino acid does not make a protein by itself. You need a long chain of them. So here's amino acid on the left hooking up with amino acid on the right and we talked about how you see that yellow circle. Those guys hook up to make a water. And that process is called dehydration synthesis when water is made to create a bond. So water goes, is made, and you get a peptide bond between these two amino acids. And so that looks like this. There were three bonds made here. You see the things in blue? Those three things became water. And so you make a peptide bond or a long chain of amino acids is called a polypeptide. Like this. This is a polypeptide. In between each of these little circles, each one representing an amino acid name, you have polypeptide. Uh, you have a peptide bond. This long chain is called a polypeptide. Now what do proteins do? Well, they, may, they either build up your body, 
They are enzymes, which help control your metabolism by building and breaking stuff. They fight diseases. Those are antibodies. And they transport materials through your cell membrane. So here's the building the body one. Your eyeball, your teeth, your bones, tendons, and hair all have different proteins. Crystalline, protein in the eye. Collagen, tendons and muscles and bone. Enamel, teeth. Keratin, skin, hair. What foods? We said the main one is meat, cheese, milk, and beans. Enzymes, like we said, are little proteins that help uh, your metabolism. They both make and break things in your body. That's all you have to know for now. They're also an organic catalyst. They help speed up reactions. Antibodies help fight diseases. So when you get a sickness, your body makes this kind of protein to help fight diseases. Transport proteins hang out on the cell membrane, and when you need some certain large, very large molecules to go through the membrane, they'll, go, they'll cross these protein transport bridges. Some stuff is small enough to go through the membrane itself, but some stuff needs this protein bridge. And last but not least, the fourth organic molecule are nucleic acids. They come in two flavors, RNA and DNA. And basically the difference is DNA is like the code, the recipe book, the instructions for how to make stuff, proteins. So RNA is in charge of making proteins, and DNA is the instructions on how to make those proteins. So they work together to build up you. And that's right. So just make sure you smile and have a good day.